Welcome to HealthCast, the heartbeat of health IT. I'm your host, Sarah Seibert. Today we're joined again by Bakul Patel from the Food and Drug Administration, only now he's been recently appointed to Chief Digital Health Officer of Global Strategy and Innovation. On this episode, we're going to learn about the progress Patel has made over the past two years and about some of his new priorities. Patel assumed his new role in February. It's housed under the Center for Devices and Radiological Health, which has a few priorities over the next few years, including promoting a modern and diverse workforce, enhancing organizational agility and resilience, and advancing health equity. Patel tells us more about his new role and why FDA decided to create this position. As you can imagine, the field of digital health is continuously evolving, right? So I think at the same time, you know, FDA needs to evolve as well. And, you know, over the over the last many years, we have sort of built a very nice infrastructure that can be really taken to the next level. And one of the key things that, that we focused on in the early days and we continue to do is, how do we increase our band strength with the right skills for, for these type of technologies so we have the right orientation in sort of how to look at it, what should we sort of consider, what should we not consider, and sort of understanding the landscapes. And so we've done that successfully and we continue to sort of do that going forward. And, and we are at a point where I think, as you saw from our strategic priorities, that health equity is one of the key aspects that we want to make sure that, um, that we address. And I, I, it's one of the passionate passion areas for me and I'm really personally passionate about it. And I think it's a great opportunity for me to take all the learnings that I've, I've sort of taken so far in building in, in building a, a, a center of excellence to the next level. This entire um, entire effort has been geared towards this one one fundamental principle is FDA needs to be ready for the future, which means that um, when technologies are evolving, uh, we want to be we want to be in a place where where the technology is going to go as opposed to following the technology. And I think we, we, we are very really cognizant and I think CDRH has been really um, innovative in terms of and very strategic in terms of, you know, how, how we position ourselves, how we position our policies, how we position our bench strength to sort of meet where, where the proverbial puck is going as opposed to chasing the puck. So I feel like that that mission of where things are going and trying to meet it there uh, while keeping in mind that patients in the U.S. have the best access to medical technologies that, are, that have been created is something that we've been, we've been sort of using that as a North Star. Creating a universal operating procedure for digital health technology developers and regulators will help the FDA better promote and protect the public health of Americans by ensuring global considerations are fully integrated into FDA's policies and operational activities. Patel will go on to explain how he will drive FDA's global strategic vision of advancing health through technology innovation. Yeah, I mean, as, as we all know, I think this especially in this field of digital health, and I think it's getting incrementally more in other areas as well, as, you know, there's no longer this divide of the borders, right? I mean, especially when you think about software, when it's delivered, it doesn't really matter where it is delivered, how it's delivered. I mean, if you can imagine a, a situation or, or a vision where where our all regulators across the globe are perfectly uh, converged on thinking, or at least from the basic principles of like how they should approach these technologies and what they should measure it for safety and effectiveness. Now we we want innovation coming either to US or innovation coming built for healthcare to drive with that with that uh, thought process with that with thought leadership that we've been providing uh, um, here in the US and for the rest of the world. So I feel like um, some of the policies, some of the work that we have already started and are doing. Uh, will continue to drive um, just global harmonization in terms of how do we sort of take those those policies, how do we take those approaches and make them common across the globe. People that suffer from the digital divide, like those living in rural communities or in poverty, benefit greatly from digital health technologies, but it's difficult for them to get access to this tech to begin with. Patel is helping to make great impacts here to improve health equity overall. 
These technologies will help bring healthcare directly to the people wherever they are. The strategic priority of advancing health equity using with where digital health technologies play like a very prime role uh, and as is poised in a really nice way to sort of advance that health equity priority. Now, as, as we just talked about, um, so those, those technologies uh, will have to reach some underserved population, not just in the US, but also across the globe. We work with international regulators on under the auspices of International Medical Device Regulators Forum, uh, which is a collection of a reg a regulatory bodies coming together to sort of do exactly what I said pre before of harmonize and converge in approaches or solve common problems that are common to all countries as they are also seeing some of these things. So I think it's it's very much in line with how equity questions that are that folks are solving around the world or trying to solve around the world is common to the equity questions that we are asking ourselves here as well. I think it's synergies and you know reducing some sort of, uh, some duplication around some of the some of the approaches they have taken and we could learn from them and I think we we could share our experiences with them and that's how I see this shaping up again we are very early into this we'll we'll have to like plan out exactly how that sort of shapes up but uh, that's that's ultimately like where where I see we can potentially sort of think take things forward I, I mean my role is little, is more focused on how do we sort of take digital health technologies and make it better for serving the health of humans um, uh, in the US so that's sort of that's how I see it and I, I don't sit in the in the technology office, but I see I sit next to it where we can see technologies made by companies that are now going to be authorized by FDA to go to patients. How do we sort of make that the, in the most efficient way? And that's sort of been our focus for a very long time in digital health. And I'll just take the health equity strategic priority and just talk about that, right? And we would love to sort of see you know, how technologies can can drive equitable access. And one specific example of that would be is how can how can remote monitoring or remote clinical trials sort of be instrumental in provide, giving giving people opportunities to participate in a trial when they previously wouldn't have that opportunity. So now if you can take take that concept or take that sort of the intent and understand what policies um, that we can create, what mechanisms, what what information can we look at, what information we should expect people from uh, from those technology makers or medical device makers sort of to present to FDA. And if we can make those more efficient, much more meaningful, um, then we can drive towards that initial intent of driving health equity. The Digital Health Center of Excellence, which Patel helped stand up in 2020 under CDRH, saw some successes such as helping boost transparency and integrate AI into some treatments and diagnostics. We have some major, major accomplishments under our belt and you know, some of the key ones, I think we held a public workshop on, uh, on transparency, which was one of the hallmarks of like, you know, how do you drive machine learning and AI solutions to be transparent to the users. I think there was a really rich conversation. Uh, on the international front, we, pub a, we along with UK's uh, healthcare uh, regulatory agency, MHRA and Health Canada, we published a set of 10 principles of for good machine learning practices. So that's like, we made tremendous progress in, in driving responsible and uh, innovation in, in AI and machine learning. We published guidances Last year, we actually were activate. We are working towards, you know, those five-step action plan that we published on AIML, um, and that's that's kind of where where I see that most of the action is going to be as we move forward. I'm not touching on everything, but it just uh, just to give you a flavor of what what we have sort of accomplished. In terms of next steps, Patel sees potential in evidence-based digital health technologies and explainable tool sets. I'll pass it off to Patel to close out this episode. I think evidence-based digital health technologies is going to be key um, in, in my mind. This is just uh, just my perspective. 
I also feel like having a methodology to to explain to users what what they are seeing, what they're being recommended by software and other technologies is going to be helpful. And then third, I think I mentioned this before, is you know we want people to to participate in um, in in clinical trials. They're 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 usually that typically would not be able to participate. That's that's number three. And and then the last is I think as we see technologies sort of and software sort of evolve and come to FDA for over authorizations, um, we want to make sure that you know it actually is representative of the population of the U.S. and there there we, we are minimizing the bias that exists in some of those some of those solutions that exist out there. This role and this evolution that you you highlighted. Is a really bold move on, on CDRH and FDA's part, and and I, I think I commend um, the leadership at FDA and CDRH to sort of be be bold enough to sort of again back to this principle of we we want to we want to anticipate where where the technology is going, where stakeholders are investing in, while keeping in mind our our goals um, of of getting getting patients the best technology that they can they can get. Um, with yeah, and I, I would say thank you again for this opportunity, and I really appreciate. And it's really truly been a pleasure chatting with you. That's all with Healthcast for now. If you'd like to learn more about FDA's Digital Health Center of Excellence, check out our earlier episode titled "FDA Advances Digital Health Innovation with New Effort," where Patel talks about how FDA is looking to advance regulatory policies, collaborate with stakeholders, and ensure digital health technologies are safe and effective for the public. Thank you for tuning in, and if you enjoyed the show, please follow us on your favorite podcast app or listen to more at govciomedia.com. Until next time. HealthCast, along with GovCast and CyberCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to govciomedia.com. Watch out for new episodes released every Tuesday and Wednesday across our shows. You can follow all of them in your favorite podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at gcio.com.